So, hi Rosie, how are you? Hi Kay, how are you? So today on um, our special Wednesday talk, we have an interview with Rosie Power. Rosie Power is another Navin person. I promise they won't all just be from Navin. Um, but Rosie is a Nothing teacher. Nothing wrong with Navin, Kay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Navin. But we will be having other people from all around the country. Um, Rosie is a teacher in Youth Reach Progression in Navin. And she must be a great teacher because she taught my son for her sins. So, um, yeah, she must be. And she got him a certificate. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she's good at her job. So, um, well, well, there was a few of us on board there. You know, <laughs> um, I'll give it over to Rosie and Rosie will just tell you a little bit about herself. And then we have some questions from some young people and from some parents. Uh, well, sure. I suppose like I suppose the way to start would be my own educational background. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you already said, Kay, I come from Navan. I've been born and raised in Navan and I went to Mercy Primary School. Now, my own experience of school wasn't a very positive one. I wasn't allowed to join the Irish class. So mm -hmm. obviously when you're 9, 10, 11, you think that's great, you're skipping classes. But it's only when you come out the other end, you realise, oh, really, you know, why wasn't I? In the Navin Travellers Training Centre at 15. And uh, because I, I, I left school at 12. I suppose the reason why we're sent to school I, I was one of the first generation in my family. You know, we were the first generation in our family to be sent to school. We were born in the 70s. And the reason for that was literally that the family business would be contained within the family. So neither of my parents could read or write. So I was taken out of school at 12 to help with younger kids and stuff. And at 15, uh, I was sent to Navan Travellers Training Centre where I took up a sitting girls course. And, uh, that was my first chance of kind of like a formal certificate, as you say. Uh, and I gave that. I was there till I was 17. And then at the time, they offered me the role of uh, the administrator, which was a position I held for about 10 years. But during that time, uh, from working in the role, uh, I got a yes for kind of to go back to school and, you know, to study. So I went to DCU, we're running a, a programme certificate in education and training. And I was one of the first participants on that. Me and a few other teachers from the centre at the time, now there were none travellers. So there was about four of us, I think, that, that done that. And I was 23 years of age and I was married with kids at the time. So it was, it was quite hard, like ju ju uh, juggling a full-time job, go back to education yeah, and have young kids. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's like it's only when you've done it just like, days you look back and you're like, how did you do it? But look, you managed. And uh, that led on to a degree program. So I done the certificate and then I done the diploma. Sorry. So I stayed the next year and done the diploma, and then they had the degree program wrote at the time. So in between that, I done a, a diploma in IT skills. It's where it's the area that I teach now is uh, IT skills. So I teach kind of QQY from level two to level five at the minute. Mm -hmm. uh, so from that then, uh, I think I had my fourth child, he was about two, when I went back to do the degree. And I swore after that I wasn't doing another course. But mm -hmm. sure, look, at you, you go back and you do bits and pieces and, you know, yeah. like uh, it was that. So that's where I was at. So I think for me, it gave me like, it was only through doing education I realised how unfairly I was treated in school. And as a result for that, of that, sorry, uh, I sent my own children to a game school. No because for me being denied Irish, uh, well, three or four of mine went to a game school. David didn't because we had moved away for about a year and we moved back and it was too late in the year. But the other three, the two girls and Vern, went to uh, the game school then. And, so, just, like, I have, uh, and just on I, that, on your, on your, your children's education, some of your, um, your, your now adult children um, are either in college or have finished college. Um, yeah. One of our parents wants to know how she's having a hard time getting her kids to see how important education is. And do you think, how do you think you got across to your kids how important education is? For me, I think it was because I had done it and it was a, you know, like it's a, a case of like they see me doing it, mm -hmm. and they used to see me writing assignments and stuff. And I used to like when we'd have conversations, 
I think the only key to everything is education. Like if you want to address equalities which traveller children suffer, or traveller people in general, or any minority, the most appropriate way and the most like uh, the most direct way and the most assertive way to address that is through education. Okay. So then you're on par with people. So they have nothing to come back to you with. So I think for me, when I went to Dublin City and Gills, it gave me a passion for learning. You know, and I just like, what I, I just felt like I was at such a disadvantage, like my kids won't be. Mm. So I, my, my answer to that, that parent would be just to encourage them and support them. You know, mm-hmm. it is hard. And it's hard in an environment where their peers are doing else, they're dropping out of school yeah. or they're moving to, on to get married and stuff. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you're up against that, like it's not the cultural norm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, they, they need to, to want to have to do it as well. Yeah, you know, absolutely. but it, they, will, they definitely will do it with, with support, you know, and tap into any supports that are there. Yeah, there is, there is loads. And we, we're here for, as well for our young people to help them with um, any forms or if they need help with Susie or going to college or anything like that, we're always here yeah. for our seniors. So one of our young people wanted to know, did you always want to be a teacher? Did you not hate them when you were in school? <laughs> no, uh, I think, in fairness, I didn't know I always wanted to be a teacher. When I was when I was about 12, I wanted to be an air hostess. But I think that came from the American TV shows. Yeah. And I think when I went back at 15, it was then I realised, as I said, you know, the unfair advantage me and most of my peers had because of our background. And then I was like, okay, how can I make a change? Obviously, you can't change the world, but you can make a dent in it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, the only way to do that is through the educational route. So if I get there and I become a teacher, I'm already challenging cultural, not cultural norms, like, I mean, perspectives people's perspectives on what travelers can or what can travelers can't achieve mm. and in a lot of cases mm. teachers expectations of uh, in general of traveler children are quite low yeah, yeah they're like oh, you have heard that oh, they, they, sorry you're okay they would uh oh they'll leave school or they'll do this or yeah. you know what's the point yeah well there, was, there was a, there was a study done in um in st pat's actually two years ago um, among student teachers and 78% of student teachers so students you know yourself are at the most enthusiastic time in their lives and 78% of student teachers in St. Pat's didn't think that traveller children would finish school so if they already have their mind made up on that before they even sit in front of a classroom that's going to project itself at some stage do you know what I mean like it's going to it's going to come across to the traveller children completely my daughter is a I have two of them in college at the minute. Sorry, I've called. Okay. I have two of them in college at the minute. Uh, two do masters. My son is doing a masters in primary school teaching, and my daughter is doing a master in primary school teaching. And my daughter had that conversation about three months ago with some of her roommates, like they were in a class discussion or in a in a discussion in the house, and they were like, you know, like traveling children are not. You know, what's the point? And she said, well, you can't treat children like that. You know, each child should be encouraged to reach their potential. And yeah. they said, no, 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 they won't drop out. And she said, well, I'm a traveler. I haven't dropped out. And they were like, oh, Quite my God, I'm so sorry. And she said, well, you don't have to be sorry to me, but your apology is to the kids that you have no faith in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know? So and do you, do you like you're up against the system. Do you, do you like teaching? That's from another one of our young people. They want to know, do you like yes, teaching? Yes, I, I love in, it. In their opinion, teachers look grumpy an awful lot of the time. So I do try and tell them most teachers do like it. But you you do like it. I know you do. I know. I really, really like teaching. I think if you could even change one person's point of view. Absolutely. You know, one young person's point of view. And I think, look, we're, we're, all, we're all conformed to, to think that the only way to school is the traditional route. It's not. No, absolutely not. There's so not. many access paths to education and there's so many opportunities out there. And, and like I work with early schoolers and these are children, some of them are from the traveller background, some of them are just, you said yourself, you're your own son there. Yeah. And uh, these children have a passion for learning. And for one reason or another, they, they didn't fit into the mainstream system. Maybe they had a personality clash with a teacher. Maybe, you know, 
it wasn't interesting enough. Maybe you know the curriculum didn't suit them, or there was family stuff going on. Going on. But you know, we're not all programmed to learn in the same way. Mm -hmm. So if you can, if you can see, if you could open one young person's eyes to education, yeah, it, it you really feel like, well, I've done my job for the yeah, birth. Absolutely. Yeah. And speaking of it, not always being the same for everyone. We have a parent here who's twenty eight years of age, and they're thinking now of going to college to do childcare. Um, they have children, so I was, you know, I was telling them you had a child, and they're saying, "Have you any advice? Have you any advice for her, how to maybe broach the subject at home, and then how to, how to do it? You know what I mean? With small children, it, it is hard to go. Even with big kids, it's hard to go to college. Well, look, it, it is. It is going to be hard. But the only thing that you can do, as I said, when I went to do my degree, my youngest was only two, and I had four of them at that stage. There was mm. only there was only thirteen years between the eldest and the youngest. So and this was only 15. Uh, I don't know, I have to be honest, like my mother and sister and my father were great, but you just have to organise yourself and plan. But if it's something you really want, you will make it happen. Absolutely. You know, uh, and I would say, like, she's 28, the world's her oyster. Oh, her kids, she'll get up some morning and her kids will be, they'll be doing their own thing, they'll be gone. Oh, oh to be 28 again, Rosie, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know now, Kay. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I'd settle for 38. <laughs> yeah. And a, a very late happy birthday. It was a little a special birthday not so long ago. Last weekend, I think, wasn't it? So happy birthday Thank to you. Yeah. Yeah, listen, Rosie, going. I could stay talking to you all day. Thanks so much for coming on and giving us an insight to um, what it's like to be going back to education. As you said, you left so early and then to go back to it and now to be teaching as a, a woman from the traveling community. It isn't necessarily the, the norm. Um, and it's not the cultural norm, but what, what is culture? Culture is always changing. So maybe, maybe education. Culture is an evolving thing, Kate. Absolutely. And uh, culture is like, you know, what people perceive of, cult, of culture and what culture actually is, is two very different things. Even you could put another very, you know, progressive travel woman beside me and she could interpret her culture very different to the way I do. I mean, Absolutely. sometimes even with, with members of my own family, you know, it can be different. And like, well, I have to say in general, my family is quite progressive when it comes to education, mm -hmm. uh, but like culture, like culture is, as I said, it's forever evolving. And I just find, you know, for any young person out there, and particularly traveling young people, you know, like the racism and discrimination is on the rise again, unfortunately. And as I said, if they could go through the education system, it just addresses all the stereotypes, mm -hmm. you know. And you're on par with your peers and then you can turn around and say well you know that doesn't apply to me so what are you talking about yeah you know yeah, absolutely no and it, it's part of my my reason behind doing these videos is is to try and break down the stereotypes and the racism and the discrimination and to show a great idea do you know what I mean? To show, number one, are my young people in my youth service? This is what you can do. And these yeah. are people who are working. And then to show the, the general public, you know, of what, what is out there. I owe you a big bottle of wine. And um, the next time I see you, thanks so much. Well, the iconic thing is like, I mean, in, in youth, rich people just see me as Rosie. I'm a teacher. Yeah. You know, they don't care who you are. They don't no. care where you come from. You know, no. uh, Okay, it was lovely talking to you. Sorry now, I am literally dosed with cold. You're absolutely so. fine. It's been lovely and uh, thanks a million and I'll give you a big squishy hug when we're allowed and a bottle of wine. Okay, thanks so much, Rosie. See ya, bye. No problem. Mind yourself. And then you're doing a fantastic job. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Rosie. Bye.